Ooh, hello and welcome to a technique video. What I want to do is I have four boulders in this gym that I haven't tried or haven't done. I was kind of a part of the setting team of some of them. And for each of those boulder, I will come up with like a little tip and something that I use to progress on it. But first, a very nice tip for everyone is to always bring a plastic bag if you have a new pair of shoes. I'm not kidding. This is like one of the biggest climbing hacks out there because it's super painful to get your feet into a new pair of shoes. Like if you try it without it, you know, the foot just doesn't go in. You're on the last bit. But if you put your foot in a plastic bag. Okay, so shoes are on. Now let's do some climbing. Okay, boulder number one done. So if we break it down a little bit, in the first kind of move around the corner, the leg is basically doing all the work to drive me around the corner to get to the first jog. Once I have the jog, it's quite easy to, easy to stick because I just gotta smack my hand in the wall to stop the swing. And then it's like kind of done for. Second move, I jump in towards the wall, swing out with my legs, and then just kind of hang on my arm and use my legs to generate momentum to jump over to the next platform. from the next platform. Once again, the leg comes into play and I use the right leg to generate momentum to get a large enough swing to just land like a, like an iron, uh, not an iron cross, but like a flag position from the mantle and the gaston. And that's quite easy to stop if you have straight arms. So you just gotta generate enough momentum to get those arms straight. And then lastly, I do one more little kick out with the leg from the ball and the side pull to the last foot hold. Uh, which is the last part where I also use momentum to my advantage. And you can use momentum both on these type of comp crazy type blocks, but you could also do it on, on rock climbs like you do it all the time if you work it well enough. And that's kind of where comp climbing comes into play outdoors quite well. You, you do use momentum for everything if you're skilled enough at it. But if you climb primarily outdoors, you don't maybe learn the same skill quite as well. So yeah, that's a breakdown of the first boulder. Let's move over to the next one. Next one is an all-out coordination dyno. Like, there's a lot of things to time in this one. And the, the big thing about it is that when you land with your foot, you need to place it right. When you land with your hand, you need to place it right. When you land with your other hand, you need to place it right. And coordinating all of these at the same time is very, very difficult. So you do need, do need to create a plan in your head in beforehand. And for me, it's land right foot on the hold. Like, that's the first thing I focus on. Just getting good momentum for my arms to generate to the foot. As soon as the foot is like stamped on the hold, I let that one generate to the next one. So as soon as the foot is on, I switch focus to the next hold, which is the crimp on the on the flat hold. Uh, so I land on that one, start pulling on it, and as soon as I can feel the pull from it, I quickly toss my left hand onto the box. And when I have both of these positions, I manage. I, I focus on pushing as much with the left hand as possible because the higher up I push myself with the left arm, the more engagement I get from the right one. So it's like taking these taking this coordination move and breaking it down into iterative steps is a great way to progress on coordination dinos and just improving on your co coordination skills, like in your, when it, whatever move you're doing, when it comes to dino into a crimp, for instance, like on Power of Now, a big part of it is, is coordinating the leg to generate from. And then when you have, when you actually get to the hole, you need to coordinate engagement. So like most outdoor moves are more basic. We just catch a hole, we pull on it and we're good. But there's still an element of coordination in it that we have to take into account. And this is a great way to practice it and learning that iterative process.
Panic at the disco. Why? Okay, next up is this blue one. This was part of the finals, and this is the only boulder of the ones that we've done today that I actually haven't touched yet. So it's gonna be a fun flash go on this one. The other ones, I've been a part of the setting, so I knew kind of the tweaks that were made, which made it a lot easier. But this one is gonna be a bit of a challenge, so I start by just trying to climb it, and then we can talk about the lessons to be learned from it. So let's break this climb down a little bit. It starts off fairly aggressive, like it's a few hard moves to get into a somewhat of a jug. And if you notice what I do there is I focus a lot on breathing and recovering fully so that it's like I haven't climbed any moves in the beginning. Because the top section is very physical. Still like just recovering and taking a few deep breaths going like that can help a long way on on this type of boulder where it's like cut off into two parts one hard section and another hard section so yeah that was the lesson from this one first go was unsuccessful but here goes the second one Success. And another thing on this type of boulder is that usually for me, these type of physical climbs where it's like a lot of, it's pretty good holds, but it's like you have to really tight your, tighten yourself up on it. It's a lot about attitude and just kind of just going for it instead of trying to be slow and controlled in all the movements. So you'll notice on the second go, I skipped one of the holds and just went straight for a bigger one and just went wide. And uh, that's why the recovery part is so important because you're doing like, very, very aggressive moves and you're trying really hard for a shorter duration when it's this physical. And that helps you kind of recover for the second part and just, again, like really, really want to murder the holds. Uh, so yeah, that's something I always consider when I'm doing more powerful boulders to like try 50% more than necessary if it's a shorter climb, because it can actually help a lot. Last boulder on the agenda is this, uh, this boulder right here. One of my creations for the competition. We never got around to climbing it. We just tried all the moves and made sure that it worked. Um, so nobody's done this as far as I know. So it's like going for the first ascent. Um, I'll go through some lessons about slopers on this one and positioning, but we'll start off by just trying to climb it so you guys can get a feel for how it looks. Part. So this one is kind of uh, co uh, condition dependent, so I probably won't be on it for too long. But I want to showcase something about shoulder engagement on slopers and how you want to move your weight inwards towards the wall to hang down on them better so you can utilize your hips. So I'll start from the sloper instead and try and showcase the top section. So the thing with the sloper is that to be able to use this at all, my hips need to be completely aligned with the wall. So like I want to sink in on it even to be able to get any form of grip from it or like tug. Because it's, 
It's technically a good sloper, but it's all in the shoulders. So to further illustrate, it's the position where I go from, from the sloper. It's important to keep the hips in to be able to generate momentum uh, through your legs, because you can't really pull on the sloper so well, unless like without falling right off. So an example of when I don't do that, it looks like this. And if you, if you look thoroughly, it's just like my arms are straight, which is good on the sloper, but my legs aren't engaged. I'm not utilizing my shoulders to pull my weight inwards and over on my hip. And because of that, I can't generate any reach to the next hold. And uh, yeah, this is like a pretty common occurrence on really, really bad slopers that you just have to pull your weight inwards to be able to generate to the next hold. So what happens when you engage the shoulders like that is that it opens up the possibility to use like your inner thigh to pull your weight inwards with the foot and kind of use your, your imagine that your, your foot is like this and it's just pulling you inwards. That's what it does, uh, which then gives you the power to use the pressing of the leg, which is obviously a lot more than you'll ever get from your arms. So basically your chest put is pushed inwards, which gives you a better contact against the hold. Instead of being out here and sliding off, we go inside by pulling with our legs and pressing our shoulders inwards so we can actively start pulling on the sloper. And that's the trick that I applied here, but uh, it's not enough to complete the climb. So I'm gonna move inside because it's quite chilly and I'm not gonna do it today, which is fine. But I'll come back some other day and try and get it for the for the Instagram or something. But yeah, let's head inside and continue a little bit. All right, my friends, those are the tips for today. This was kind of an unusual format on my channel to do, you know, like a session and at the same time throw out some tips. Let me know what you think in the comments down below because uh, I'm curious if you want me to do another one of these because I mean, there's an endless amount of advice to be given and I thought it was a lot of fun. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you like it and otherwise I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace and remember to subscribe.